Hello, welcome back to the Terra Devlog, a survival and exploration game set on your very own planet. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I made my planet go from this to this. In the last video, I introduced you to the main character of Terra, Usk, and took you through the story on how he and Terra has evolved over the years. If you didn't see it, I really recommend watching it, as it has some great insight into how Terra came to be. But anyways, after we got our beautiful no-face character running around, I thought this boring, bland world deserved a bit of love as well. So it was definitely time to have a look at some foliage and making the landscape a bit more interesting with some mountains, forests and some oceans. I've been looking forward to this part for quite a while now, as I think it makes such a massive difference when the world around you looks great and polished. It makes the game so much more immersive, which again makes it a lot more motivational to work on, and it also makes it a lot more rewarding to show your game to others when you're actually proud of how it looks. So I started this planet overhaul by improving the trees. I gathered a ton of references and found a style I loved, where I kept the low poly look but added some subtle color gradients to make the assets stand out. These trees definitely look a lot better than the old trees, and to make them come a bit more alive, let's add some simple wind to them. There are a lot of ways to add wind to your foliage in Unreal, and they all usually use the material. Because in there you can add something called a world position offset to all the vertices of the object this material is applied on. Take this sphere for example. If I have no world position offset in the material, it will just stay in the same place. But if I add some offset in for example the x-axis, then the whole sphere moves in that direction. And this is because all the vertices in the sphere get the same position offset applied to them. If we instead connect a node called Simple Grass Wind to this world position offset and add some parameters to this, then all the vertices move like there's wind blowing on them. Cool! So this is one way to add some simple wind to our trees. But trees usually don't just shake like this when there is wind. The wind usually bends the whole tree, like in this video. So. If we use some clever math to rotate all the vertices in the wave pattern and make the rotation stronger the higher up the tree we get, then we get this nightmare fuel. <laughs> I don't even know where to start on this, honestly. How does this even happen? But after a while of getting my numbers and math in order, we get this forest, which <laughs> looks like the audience of a rock concert. In my opinion, this looks incredible, but let's make it a bit less strong and randomize it a bit for each tree. And there we go looks a bit more realistic. We should definitely make a rock biome though, where all the trees just constantly headbang. <laughs> that would be sick. <laughs> so now we have some wind in our trees. The next thing I wanted to have a look at is grass. I made a couple of different grass models. One of them is inspired by the foliage of Astroneer, where the grass have these square blades, which I think looks really cool. And one where the grass is more three-dimensional and pointy. I asked you guys on the Discord which style you preferred, and all of you <laughs> voted for the pointy 3D grass, and we had some great discussions on why this would probably be the better choice, so that's the one I went for. If you also want to help making these kinds of decisions for the game, join the Discord with the link in the description. While researching the best practices for making grass in Unreal, I learned a great little trick from this video made by Gersh Ger this guy? He's great. He taught me about a concept called baking pivot points, and how this can be very practical with foliage. In a nutshell, this technique basically uses the UV map of the mesh to give all the grass blades their own pivot point. And this means that I can translate, scale and rotate each blade individually in the material. And why is this useful? Have a look at this grass growing directly out from the ground. This is not natural. Usually grass would grow straight up facing the sky. And by using this technique, I can rotate all the grass blades to face the upward direction, instead of going straight out. I also use the same technique to space out the grass blades a bit, so we get some simple density variation for free. So I really recommend this video to get started with grass in Unreal, it has taught me a lot, so I'll link it in the description below. So now we have trees and grass. 
and everything is already looking better, but we still have a long way to go. And at this point, my voxel graph, which I used to generate my terrain and the foliage, started to get really messy and unmanageable. So I decided to take some time to clean up and make a better system for managing all my foliage. The voxel plugin makes it possible to split all my logic into separate graphs. So I made one graph that handles the spawning of foliage, and then I can make instances of this graph for all my foliage assets. This makes it super easy to add new foliage by just making a new graph instance and changing the parameters of it, such as what meshes my foliage should use and how it should spawn on the terrain. I also added the possibility to spawn the foliage in something called clusters, which basically means that you add all your foliage around a center point, which makes these natural looking clumps of foliage. Then you scatter these clusters all around your world, which makes your foliage look varied and natural, where you have some areas that have a lot of trees and some areas that are more open and grassy. One example of where this clustering is really common and noticeable in real forests are with ferns. Usually when walking around in forest, you stumble upon these clumps of ferns. They usually never grow alone and spread out very quickly. So they make their own little fern fields. And this is exactly what foliage clustering lets you do. And what better way to showcase this clustering than to actually add ferns? I had an old fern model lying around from an earlier prototype, so I added this to my project and made an instance of my foliage graph for my ferns. And by playing around with the parameters, I got some really nice fern clusters. I think details like this clustering is one of the things that really elevates foliage in games. And in a procedural game like this one, it is especially important, as you would otherwise end up with foliage that looks boring and repetitive, and very obviously procedurally placed. Clustering helps to break up your areas, add variation and interesting natural landmarks that you would otherwise have to place manually to achieve. I also added some simple reeds and tall grass along the shoreline. Oh, and wait, we don't have a shoreline yet. Let me just add another voxel graph for the water real quick. Give it a water material and there. Yes, where was I? Yeah, reeds. Cool. Along the shoreline. Nice. And at this point, I decided to take a little break from the foliage and have a look at the terrain generation. Currently, we only have these round hills all over the place and not a lot of variation. Let's make the landscape a lot more interesting by adding some mountains and working on the shape of our entire planet. As I've shown in the previous devlog, the landscape of my planet is created using noise functions. This is what makes it procedural. By changing the noise function, we change the entire planet. Therefore, if I want to make our landscape interesting, we have to modify our noise function so it makes interesting shapes. And while researching different ways of manipulating our noise functions in fun ways, I learned about something called noise warping. And this is basically a technique that warps and distorts our noise. And by adding this and increasing the strength of it, you can see how it generates these weird, interesting and appealing shapes in our landscape. It almost looks like it's smudging and pushing the landscape together to make long mountain ranges with hills and fjords. I was absolutely amazed by this little trick and I think my planet looks a million times better with it. It somehow makes it look more natural and more stylistic at the same time. Incredible. So now that we have some interesting mountain shapes, I added another noise function to make the green forest areas and blended between the two using yet another noise function. And voila, we have a landscape with interesting mountain shapes, big forests and grassy fields. Look at these mountains. It's crazy how all of this is created with just math. That's amazing. But we're not done just yet. We're missing a crucial piece of foliage that basically all landscapes contain. And that is, of course, rocks. So I made a couple of rock models in Blender and chucked them all in yet another foliage graph. And I want these rocks to also be spawned as clusters across our landscape, as this is actually quite common for rocks naturally as well. Looks really nice. Having these rock clusters also really help with breaking up the forest areas by adding some variation and visual focal points. They will also of course act as resources for the players later. Now our landscape is starting to look quite good, but I'm missing some colors. Currently it's all very green and grey with no contrasting elements. 
It probably doesn't need a lot, but just some colorful mushrooms here and there should really help tying it all together and make a pleasing scene. Just a tiny splash of contrasting colors goes a long way in making your landscape visually pleasing, as it adds a lot of depth and gives your eyes something to focus on in the middle of all the greenery. Like that little extra spice in your meal. It's important not to overdo it though, so just a little sprinkle of mushrooms is enough for now. I could probably have added some flowers and other elements to this biome as well, but I will save that for other areas in the future. To finish things off, let's add some color variation to both the terrain and the foliage. By adding a hue shift node to our materials, we can randomly change the color hue of our foliage slightly to break up the otherwise uniform colors. This helps to add some realism and makes the world a lot more vibrant and dynamic. Let's do the same for our landscape material as well, just varying the colors slightly with the noise pattern. And also, let's add some darker dirt colors to the shoreline so it looks like the water has worn away the grass. All of these small color variation changes helps a lot in adding depth to our environment. Here is a side-by-side -side on how the world looked without, and then with the slight color adjustments. It's not a lot, but it adds some visual interest and realism, making the world just a little bit more immersive. And also, if you animate the hue shift, you get this really trippy effect that I'll have to use somehow. But with that, here is the current state of our new planet. We have great mountain ranges, interesting geological weirdness, forests and grassy plains, lakes, oceans and fjords. Currently, this covers the whole planet's surface, but this is just one of the biomes I've planned for Terra. Soon, this planet will be filled with a lot of different biomes to explore. But I think this is a great place to start, and a great way for all of you to get a much better understanding of what Terra will be like. It's definitely a giant step forward from where we were in the last video. I hope you like it! Please make sure to let me know what you think in the comments. Any type of feedback is greatly appreciated. And also, if you want to join the discussions over on Discord, you will definitely have the opportunity to contribute to the game's development and help me make important decisions, such as if the grass should be pointy or not. Alright, I'll end this video here. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the Terra devlog. And if you enjoyed the video, a like would bring a big smile to my face. Catch you later!